Welcome to e Know How. In this video, I would like to show how magnitude and phase of a transfer function are calculated. Before we go into the discussion about poles and zeros, I thought this would be very important. And uh, usually a lot of people have confusion with this uh, magnitude and phase. So let's look at a system so which has an input Vn. So you have input Vn here. And then there is an output V out, and you have a ground signal with which everything is being referenced. And so internally, it could have many elements. Like you, you know, you could have a resistor, you could have an inductor, you could have a capacitor. So it's all there. There could be many elements within the transfer function, including gain phases, gain um, gain blocks, and all that stuff in there. So right now, let's assume this is a black box. So we have this transfer function here. So now uh, we represent, we say that the transfer function, the H of S is V out over V in. And usually when you have reactive elements like resistors or capacitors, this function would turn out to look like it would have a real value and you will have plus j omega which is a frequency dependent imaginary value multiplied by an imaginary value im. So this is your transfer function h of s or h of j omega. So maybe I'll say j omega here or you could also write it as real value plus s times imaginary value. So you have this. Now how do we calculate the magnitude and the phase? Uh, phase, what we mean by phase is the phase difference between the input signal and the output signal. So we'll always assume say input, input could be say input sinusoidal signal say for example need not be a sinusoidal, just giving an example of a sinusoidal input signal. And so this is our reference phase. So we will say this input signal has a phase of zero. And then depending on what the output signal is, so the output signal could be shifted in phase here. So it could be ahead or um, ahead in phase or lagging in phase with respect to the input signal. So this has a, a 45 degrees phase difference. So it is 45 degrees uh, uh, later or minus 45 degrees. So it's lagging in phase. So now how do we calculate this phase difference and the magnitude of the gain from this, this H of S. So now for magnitude what we do is, so magnitude H of S is nothing but square root of, we use the Pythagoras theorem, so it is real value square plus omega square imaginary value square. So that is the magnitude h of s, this is the magnitude. And usually magnitudes are not represented, um, you know, like exactly using the gain, what we do is we represent the magnitudes in dBs, so decibels dB. We'll see why this is useful later. Now how do you convert this magnitude into dB? So this we call say gain, this is say G here. And now to convert this magnitude in dB, magnitude in dB, what we do is we take we do 20 times multiply by log to the base 10 the gain. So this is the magnitude in dB. So we got the gain is equal to this the real value square plus omega square imaginary value square and then we get the magnitude in dB by by taking the log to the base 10 and multiplying it with 20. 
now how do we get the how do we get the phase difference between the output and the input so for that one let's take this let me put a this is our transfer function so now the phase difference is nothing but the theta is tan inverse tan inverse the value of the imaginary value omega times i m divided by the real value so this is the phase this is the phase difference or the phase of the output signal with respect to the input signal assuming the input signal is zero phase so the output signal will be at this phase and now what happens if your transfer function looked not like this but like say I'll take a transfer function that looks like 1 over real value plus j omega times imaginary value now if it is like this then the magnitude is again would be 1 over square root of real value square plus omega square imaginary value square this is the gain or the magnitude and then you convert to dv's again now but for the angle theta would be you put a minus sign minus tan inverse omega times imaginary value divided by the real value so once it's in the in the denominator you put a minus sign so it lags in phase so whereas it leads in phase here if it is in the numerator so this is the the phase and this is the phase if if the transfer function is like this if the h1 of s is 1 over real value plus j om j omega times imaginary value now this is this is how we calculate the magnitude and phase of any transfer function now let's see how the db values will work out because this is very useful later so now let's look at the decibels the gain so now say if you had a gain of so now I'll write gain here so gain and gain in in db now if you had a gain of 0 0.1 the gain in db is 20 log to the base 10 0 0.1 which would be minus 20 db so minus 20 db is 0.1 one tenth of the one tenth if the gain is one tenth now if you had say 0.5 so it would be 20 log so it's the base 10 i won't write that again 0.5 which would be work out to minus 6 db and then if you take 1 over root 2 I'll tell you why this is important it would be important when, when we look at the poles and zeros so if the gain is 1 over root 2 which is 0 0.707 so 20 log 0 0.707 which would be minus 3.01 db so this 3 db is pretty important we will look at it while later 3 db that's where you know the poles and zeros are start with 3 db uh, less or 3 db more so now uh, let's look at take 2 again of 2 so it would be 20 log to the base 10 2 which would be 6 db so now if you have a gain of 10 which would work out to 20 db now if you give a have a gain of 100 it would work out to 40 db 
So this is 20 log 10 to the base 10 to the base 10. Same thing here, 20 log 40, sorry, 100 to the base 10, which would be 40 dB. So now if the gain was 0 0.01, 1 over 100, you would get minus 40 dB. So these are the, this is how the gain is calculated to gain in decibels. So now let's look at um, the phase angle. The phase angle, we said it is, it's usually a tan inverse of a quantity. Tan inverse of the omega times imaginary divided by the real value. So now let's assume this omega imaginary is 0.1 times the real value. So if you take tan inverse 0 0.1 which will work out to 5.7105 degrees and if if this if this value here this value here is uh, 0 0.5 so let's look at 0.5 so it would be tan inverse 0 0.5 which is half and that 0 0.5 would work out to 26.56 degrees and if this if omega m of omega i m imaginary is equal to real so when both get equal then tan inverse 1 which is 45 degrees so now let me put a box around this because this is very important too because like we saw the 3 dB where 20 log 0 0.707 or 20 log 1 over root 2 so tan inverse 1 is also very important when we look at poles and zeros so now if you have tan inverse 2 which would work out to 63.439 degrees and then tan inverse, see you have a gain of 10, or sorry, not a gain, I'm saying the imaginary value, omega imaginary is 10 times the real, so now you will have 84.28 degrees. So even this, uh, this one is important too, and this, this one is important too because when we sketch Bode plots, this is kind of important when we when we look at the phase. So this is how we take the transfer function of a system and calculate its magnitude and phase.